Hi there, I'm Alexandra Harbushka. I'm the founder of Life with Herpes. It is a podcast, it is a blog, it's a YouTube channel. Most importantly, it is a community for people living with herpes. So if you've not checked out Life with Herpes and checked out The Secret Society, I wanna invite you to go over and do that. So go head on over to lifetherpes.com, check it out. Check out The Secret Society, find out a little bit about it. I highly recommend it. There's hundreds of people in there um, who are living with herpes, who are supporting each other, and um, it's a really great spot. Okay, let's talk about some online dating. Let's talk about some pros, let's talk about some cons, let's just, let's just talk about dating, online dating in general. So as you know, we have this, this, like, oh, I gotta meet someone, how do I meet them, and we get all, we get all like riled up about finding that person. And over the years, it's become more and more difficult as, as technology comes into play, as we get busier, um, to meet people. So I can remember, you know, 10, 15 years ago, if you walked into Starbucks, you didn't have people on their phones, right? We didn't have smartphones, we had flip phones, um, didn't really have text messaging, you know, so it was easy to strike up a conversation with somebody at Starbucks or wherever, the post office, or wherever you naturally go. Now, because of, you know, the fast-paced life that we live, and because of our smartphones, and because just the way that the future generations have been raised is we are in our phones all the time. So it makes it difficult to strike up, strike up a conversation or meet someone or even can give us a little bit of anxiety to be like, oh, I gotta talk to someone. How am I gonna do that? What am I gonna do? So a great solution to this is online dating. Um, I Again, this has been around for about 15 years. And I can remember back when I'm online dating first began, there were a lot of people that were like, oh gosh, no, I would never do, like what, you want me to go online? That's so weird. And that was the first kind of reaction to online dating. And then move fast forward now into where we are, it's the total norm, right? It's an app on our phone, it's people on multiple sites, you swipe right, you swipe left, like it, it, it's it's a thing, it's, it, is, it is the, way to meet people. I can even remember back, again, 15 years ago, asking people how they met, and they met on dating sites, and they wouldn't even admit, they're like, oh yeah, we met through a friend at work. Like, people wouldn't necessarily even mention that they met someone on a dating site. So it's just really interesting how it's evolved and that it's the new norm. But still, there are some pros and there are some cons. There are some people that are 100% all about it and there's some people that are like, uh-uh, no way, absolutely not. So let's go over some of the pros and cons that are are about um, dating sites. So here's a, we'll go over the pro. We'll, let's, let's do, we'll do pros first. One of the pros is you can di differentiate, that's always a hard word for me, um, between dating, hooking up, and getting married. So on the app, you can state like, hey, I'm just here to hook up. Or no, I, I want to get married. Or you know what, I just wanna see what it is. Like I, let's just be friends a little bit and let's kinda see. So you can definitely put out your purpose. You can say, I am here for this purpose, which is really great because a lot of times having that conversation on a first date, say you do meet that person at Starbucks, first date it's not like, okay, so I wanna get married and have 25 kids. Like that would be really scary, I think, if someone said that to you. So it's, it's a way that you both are on the same page of what your expectations are of each other. Um, online dating kind of expands your pool. As we know, it's a numbers game, right? So it expands your pool. It, um, it'll, it'll find people that you may not have naturally met. So in the olden days, 15 years ago, <laughs> or even 25 years ago before we had the internet, can you believe that the internet's only 25 years old? Anyways, before that, it was met through your sphere. It was met through your friend of a friend, a colleague, a, uh, you know, oh, hey, I got this great person or that person in the elevator that's like, oh, my grandson would be so perfect for you, right? It's, it's your sphere. So you're going to meet someone that's like one or two degrees removed. Now moving forward, the way that the dating apps are, you have the ability to meet somebody in circles that you may have never had the opportunity to bump into. So that's a great thing. 
All right, uh, next thing is personality. You can specify what you're looking for. So you can specify what's important to you. Um, you can specify what's not important to you. Uh, you know, if you're into scuba diving and you want a partner that is gonna do like this deep sea scuba diving with you, which would not be me, by the way. Uh, don't, you don't, I don't wanna do that. But if you were really into that, and you want someone that's gonna be really into that, then you can specify that. Likewise, uh, you know, if you're into food, you're into wine, if you're a drinker, if you're not a drinker, if you're a smoker, or not a smoker, these are things that you can all specify that are important to you. It's kind of cool, right? You meet someone random, you wanna know if they're a scuba diver, if that's your thing. Now, as we know, there are Tons of, there's, I actually forgot to mention earlier, there's about 2,500 different online dating sites. That's a lot. They can go from location, they can go to, you know, income, like data millionaire, they can go to race, they can go to religion, and even herpes. So there are many herpes dating sites out there. So one of the good things, if you do pick a specific one for herpes, you don't have to do the disclosure. It's already out there. Now, it's obviously a conversation, as you know me talking in past episodes, things like that. It's really important to still have that safe sex talk and talk about your sexual health, but the cat's are already out of the bag. If you're on a herpes dating website, you have herpes, and so does that person. So it, it's kind of the elephants out of the room, which is a great thing, right? That's a lot of times people are, are uh, like, frozen in fear to go out and date because of that conversation. So this is a really great resource and a really great solution to having that really uncomfortable, difficult conversation. So that's a really big pro, really big pro. Let's go to cons. Okay, dangers of the unknown, that's a con. Is the person that you're seeing on the other end really the person he or she says they are? You know, it's one thing to fib about your height, one thing to fib about your weight, things like that, but if this is someone you don't know and don't know anything about this person and they're so far removed from you, it can be a little scary. You may not know exactly who's on the other end. Uh, he or she can say, I'm this, I'm that, and, and, and put up maybe a facade for the first couple dates. Um, so it's really important to, to know who, who, you're, who you're jumping in with, you know? Who, who is this person? That's, that's a big one. And that's maybe one of, I think, one of the biggest fears that people talk about in online dating. Are they really who they say they are? Um, it can take time. It can take time for you to build your profile, spend time on the app. Uh, you know, it, it's it's like a, a second job. Uh, you you got you got to fill it out correctly. The more you put in, the more you get out. You really want to take the time. Like again, back to the scuba diver thing. If you're a scuba diver, you don't want to check all the, the boxes and all these things that are really important to you. You want to make sure you find that person. You don't want to mislead them. If you're gonna put the time in put the time in. So um, it can it can take some time, you know, to to spend and swiping and reading through people's profiles and do I like them, do I not like them. So there's a lot of um, back end time before front excuse me, front end time before you even begin the dating process. The next thing <coughs> excuse me. The next thing is the conversation can start out one dimensional. So Different from meeting somebody at Starbucks or meeting someone at the post office or at the bank or at the beach or at yoga is you're meeting them on an app. So you're communicating in just texting mode. When you want, when it's convenient to you, your response is, is, are, is canned, right? You, it's, it's not, you, you, you can think about it, you can do it on your own, you're gonna put your best pictures up there. So it is a one dimensional, meaning like it, it's, it's a kind of a superficial level. It's gonna take you a while to go deeper into that conversation with that person, opposed to, again, meeting someone in real life, in person, Conversations are different, right? You go, you you can feel their chemistry. You can see certain mannerisms you may or may not like about them. Um, certain lifestyle choices, all of that. So again, from a text, it's kind of hard to go deeper and kind of know someone you want to spend time with. And then another one is the software is in control of who you meet. 
for example, you put your restrictions on or you put your, yeah, I guess your, your, your buffers, your boundaries on, and you tell the computer, the software, I only want to meet, I'll use the scuba diving again. I only want to meet people that scuba dive, period. Well, what if the person that you're meant to meet hasn't yet gotten into scuba diving, right? So the software would not match you up with that person. That, that's kind of a thing. I've talked to many people who have met on dating sites and they're like, ah, I'll just expand my location from you know, San Diego to LA or from you know, uh, New York to Long Island. They'll just expand it and then they've met that person just by expanding their funnel. In my personal situation, I would have never been matched up with my husband based on the qualifications that I have. So for example, one of my big qualifications was 10 years older. I'll go, I'll meet someone 10 years older than me. Well, my husband is more than 10 years older than me. So I would have never been matched with him, even though everything else would have linked up. So perfect example, right? Okay. So there's a lot of good pros and cons to online dating. Um, you know, I just want you to be aware of them. I definitely think that it is, if, if you are not dating and you want to date, do it. I mean, it's fun. Go out, have fun. Even if it's just sitting at home, swiping and looking at people, Hey, it's fun. Go do it. Have fun. As I mentioned earlier, there are some specific uh, sites for people living with herpes. Uh, one that I am a fan of is dating positives. It is, uh, it's, it's a new company. They're, they just look like they're having fun. So I like it. I like what they're doing. I've spent some time with them. Um, I really like what they're doing on the back end. So that's what I recommend. I do have a link below for you to go check it out, but, uh, go have fun. Let me know what you think. I'm, I'm pretty interested in your comments here on this online dating. All right. If you have not checked out life with herpes, like I mentioned, go do that. Go check it out. Go life herpes.com. Check it out. Go see what the secret secret society is all about. I, I just think I'm like tickled by how awesome it is. So I love for you to go check it out. All right. I'll see you soon in the next episode. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.